we're going to look at solving inequalities again. This time we're going to look at a more complex challenging problems. This one here happens to be a, a quadratic inequality. Typically, if you're solving an equation, you want to set it equal to zero. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to get zero on one side. Then we're going to go ahead and factor this. If it didn't factor, you could use your quadratic formula. Well, when you do that, you get your first parenthesis to be zero at a negative three, your second one to be zero at a seven. I call those your critical points. Your negative three and your seven really divide your number line into three regions. One of those regions will work or two of those regions will work and we just gotta figure out which regions will work. So all I'm gonna do is try a number in each one of these regions to see what works. So let's go ahead and try a number over here to the left of negative three. So let's try negative four. Negative four plus one is negative. Negative four minus seven is negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. And a positive is not less than zero. So to the left of negative three, you're not going to shade. Well, we're gonna go ahead and try the same thing, but now we're gonna try a number in between. Well, the easy number to try in between would be zero. Zero plus three is positive. Zero minus seven is negative. And then a positive times a negative is negative, which is less than zero. So we tried a number in between, made it a true statement. So we're going to shade there. Now we're going to try a number to the right, say seven. Try seven. Seven plus three is positive. Or not, why did I try seven? We've got to be to the right of seven. Sorry about that. So we try eight. Eight plus three is positive. Eight minus seven is positive. And we know a positive times a positive is positive, which is not less than zero. So that means it did not work. So we're not going to shade over there. So then we can write our interval notation based from our number line. And so we're shading in between negative three and seven. Remember, it's smallest to largest. Well, we're going to do the same type of thing here. We're going to set it or get zero on one side. And then we're going to go ahead and try to factor that. Now, if you get zero on one side, you would have this statement here in between of an x to the fourth plus a 15x squared minus a 16 less than zero, which does factor into what we have down below. Now, you'll notice the first one here is really a sum of squares. Sum of squares doesn't factor over the real numbers. Second one is really difference of squares, so that one does factor. So we have this then factored into our three parentheses. We gotta look at our critical points. Our critical points are what causes these to be zero. Well, you're gonna get a one here and a negative one here. Well, this is never gonna be zero because if you square anything and add 16, it's never gonna be zero. So that's always positive. So you don't get any critical points from that. So then you wanna go ahead and try your two critical points that you have on a number line. And once again, you want to go ahead and try a number in each region. So we could try a number, say, negative 2. Well, we know this one's always positive. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative. But negative times a negative is positive. Times another positive is positive. Is a positive less than 0? No. So you're not going to shade. Try a number in between, say, 0. And we know that's positive. 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 minus 1 is negative which means we get a negative answer up here when you multiply it out and we're looking for stuff that's less than zero, which is negative. We tried a number in between, it did work, so we're gonna shade there. And then we try a number to the right, say two. That's positive, two plus one is positive, two minus one is positive, multiply three positives together here, and that's positive and we're looking for something that's negative, so it doesn't work. So then you're gonna write your inequality from that. Well, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. <clears throat> but the only difference is, since we have variables in the bottom, you gotta be careful about what causes the bottom to be zero. Well, the bottom does factor. What causes the bottom to be zero also end up being critical points. So we have our critical points of a three and a four, and they are what cause the bottom to be zero. And I would note that because we need, to, or when we do our number line, we know that we can't use a three 
a negative, oh, we got a problem here. That's a positive tree there, so sorry about that. Okay, we got that fixed back to be a positive tree, so. Okay, so we're going to put those on our number line, but we still have to find all of our other critical points. Well, basically all you have to do then is just cross multiply. You take this denominator here times zero, you get zero. And when you're finding your critical points, you treat it as an equals. And so then you get an x plus 5 equals 0 when you do this denominator times that numerator. And so then you get your other critical point to be a negative 5. And so then we want to go ahead and try a number in each one of these regions. And I'm going to put it into the factored one here to see what works. So we try something over here, say a negative 6. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative. Negative 6 minus 3 is negative. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative. So on the bottom we get a positive, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and that's what we're looking for. We want it to be less than zero, so we tried a number here and it works, so we're going to shade there. Now we're going to try a number in between. We could try, say, zero. We get a negative and a negative, and then we get a positive. So the top is positive, the bottom when you multiply it out is positive, a positive over a positive is not less than zero, so we're not going to shade. And then we could try a number over here say three and a half. Three and a half makes uh, that positive. Three and a half minus four is negative. Three and a half plus or minus four is positive. Multiply the bottom out, we get a negative. A positive divided by a negative is a negative, and that's what we're looking for here. So we tried a number here and it works, so we're going to shade there. Now we'll try a number to the right over here. We'll try five. <clears throat> makes that positive, makes that positive, makes that positive. Everything's positive, so when you multiply and divide, you get positive. Well, it's not going to be less than zero, so it doesn't work. Now, the reason I like to have this noted over here, of the 3 and the 4, they're dividing by zero. We can never divide by zero, so we can never include the critical points down here, because that would cause zero to be on the bottom, so we know those are going to be curved. This one here would be square, because that's uh, equal to, and that was our critical point from solving it. So then we end up getting our interval notation to look like this. Well, we're going to go ahead and do that here also. Now, your critical points from dividing by 0, here you get a 3. Here, when you subtract your 1, divide by 5, you get this. And so now we get your answers. But now we've got to go ahead and treat it as an equals and basically solve it. So let's go ahead and cross multiply this times this this times this, distribute through, solve it, and you get x be negative 5. So you get negative 5 for your other critical points. So you're going to go ahead and put all those on your number line. Oops. Well, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay, so let's suppose we try negative 6. Now there's no nice way to put it in here other than putting it into the original. So we put a negative 6 in here. You get 3 over a negative 29. Put a negative 6, you get 1 over negative 9. Well, those decimal approximations are down here. We want to know, is this one here greater than that one? Is this one here farther to the right one than that one? Is this one here farther to the right than this one? Yes, so that's why we're going to shade here. We try a number in between. We could try, say, negative 1. Put a negative 1 here. Put a negative 1 here. Well, when you put a negative 1 in each one of those spots, you end up getting a negative 3 fourths and you get a negative 1 fourth. So is a negative 3 fourths greater than a negative 1 fourth? And well, which one's farther to the right on your number line? This one's farther to the right, so that's the bigger one, and we're looking for that to be the smaller one. So that means you're not going to shade in between. And so then you're going to check that also here, plugging in 0. That's pretty easy to do and you'll get a 3 greater than a negative 1 third, so that works. Then you try a number over here, say 4, and so when you do that, you end up getting uh, this versus 1, which it obviously doesn't work, so it doesn't. you're not going to shade there. So then you're going to go ahead and uh, get your interval notation from your number line. 